let me lay it out for you. Four-time Super Bowl champion, two-time Pro Bowler, 13-year NFL veteran, all of those 13 years spent with the sil- – I'm sorry, with <laughs> – I almost said the silver and gold, the, the red and gold, uh, the San Francisco 49ers. Jesse Sapolo, absolutely honored to have you on, Jesse. Thank you so much. We'll get into the uh, – I know you're, you're going to be involved with the uh, Golden Heart Run at Levi's this weekend. We'll get to that in, in just a minute. But first off, 13 years with one team. I feel like we talk about it all the time in basketball with guys like Kobe and Tim Duncan, Steph Curry nowadays. But what does it mean to play with one organization? What does it mean to you personally to play with an organization for 13 years? Well, it means a lot. You know, uh, looking back on it now, uh, like you said, there's not many people that do it now. So it's something that I take pride in. the fact that I wore one uniform, you know, now, nowadays, if you, it's normal to wear three uniforms sometimes, right. but, uh, uh, the fact that, uh, we were the, the team doing my era there and to, to only play for the 49ers is something that I can look back on and, and, and share that with my kids and grandkids that that's the only team that our family is going to cheer for. <laughs> that's awesome. And yeah, I mean, the Niners this season, Uh, There's been a lot to cheer for, and there's been some to jeer for as well. Four and four start. Definitely not the start I think anybody was drawing up after the Super Bowl run last year. Um, Just in general, I mean, you you won four Super Bowls. You were part of a lot of other successful teams as well. Do you remember ever kind of having a season that started like how the Niners season has started so far with just a little bit of uncertainty, maybe injuries kind of cause it to go a certain way. And then uh, do you remember it ever starting this way, but then ending uh, in, in real success at the end of the season? Uh, absolutely. The ring that I wear the most, in fact, the ring that I reach for the, to grab, if I was to go anywhere for an appearance, it's a ring that we started off six and five. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, even back then before social media, but we, we read the newspaper <laughs> and the little fine print where people comment, there were a lot of people that jumped off the wagon, you know, uh, uh, you know, we blew a 23 point lead in Arizona. It was 23 to nothing at halftime. And we lost that lead. And that's when we were six and five. And, I know I, I can remember like it was yesterday how Bill Walsh went off. We had a couple players only meetings, uh, but but that is a season that I remember uh, the most because that's when you grow as a person. You know uh, when you go through a lot of adversity. Uh, the other Super Bowls that I had were blowouts, and you know I played on a team that went uh, you know eighteen and one, seventeen and two. And those were great, great football teams. But the one that I remember the most is when we went through some adversity. And, and uh, you know, we, we had a team uh, two years ago that started off 3-5 and five and went on to, uh, to the NFC Championship game. So, um, you know, th- this group can certainly do it. I know it's tough to take it all the way to the end last year uh, and then lose it in overtime. It's tough. But what people don't understand it's tough emotionally to recover from being so close and then come back and start over. And I, I know that's what this team is going through. I know the fact that we had some uh, holdouts, you know, and I held out twice in my career. I understand it takes a little while to get your feet under you. So those are the, some of the issues that we're going through. And then, of course, you know, the best running back in the league is not playing. Right. We lost an up-and-coming receiver that, uh, in IU. Uh, those are some of the stuff that we have to maneuver and fight through. Uh, but I have, I'm confident that with this group, uh, we're going to make a run. We just got to you put two wins together, then you put three wins together, and then you go from there. Absolutely. And, and I have it in my notes here that the Niners have the fourth toughest remaining strength of schedule. So if they can make it through this regular season, and even just, I think at this point, make the playoffs, I, I feel like they have to be considered as one of the top contenders in the NFL, even still record doesn't really matter. You can throw them out the window. I mean, just like you said, with the amount of talent that this team has and still has waiting in the wings, it, it does feel like you just can't really count them out. And I, I do want to ask you, uh, Jesse Sapolo, four-time Super Bowl champion, two-time Pro Bowler, 13-year NFL veteran, all with the Niners. 
I, I want to ask you about the Niners standout rookie this season. And really it's because I feel like you can give us better insider, at least better commentary than what I feel like most can. Dominic Pooney has been an absolute monster all season long, even from the preseason he was really uh, – uh, you You could see early that he was going to be a dominant presence. What have you seen from him at the guard position? Where do you think he can pr- improve at, and, and where do you think he already is is excelling and exceeding expectations? Well, there's no question Dominic Pune is a jab, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you find what they call diamonds in the rough, you know. I'm an 11th round draft choice, so nobody expected a lot out of me. And even though, despite the fact that he's a third rounder, which is pretty high, yeah. but nobody expected him to start from from the first game as a rookie, you know. And and I think when the the the, the, the ultimate compliment to Dominic is when you watch the line, you don't even know which one is the rookie, you know. That just shows you how well this young man is playing, and he's only going to get better. Um, you know, as he uh, learns different nu- nuances of what the D-line is trying to do to you. Um, the only thing that I'll advise him is at some point, because there's so many more games in the NFL than it is in college, uh, you're going to hit a wall. Mm. And that's when you really have to adjust your thinking from being a college football player to being an NFL player by taking care of your nutrition, uh, make sure to, to rest. You know, not like in college, you know, by the time you, you hit the wall, the college season is pretty much over. So that's going to be an adjustment, especially if we get into the playoffs. Right. That's exactly what I was going to say, especially if the Niners make it to the playoffs. I mean, yeah, that's that's just not something you really think about um, from that perspective at all. So really appreciate that 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 insight. And I know you're, you're really big. Um, in in the uh, Polynesian community, obviously one of the first really big, prominent Polynesian players. And uh, I know Tua Tungavailoa has won the Polynesian Pro Football Player of the Year a couple different times. What is your relationship with him currently? And then he's obviously in the news um, for, for a lot of his health reasons. What have you kind of thought about the the situation that's gone on with Tua in Miami? Well, you know what? Here's a, here's a true story. This is funny. I just talked to his dad five minutes ago. Oh, that's awesome! And I told him I'll call him right back. I have a radio interview. <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence! Perfect you know, timing. I know what a coincidence. So he's he's waiting on my call as soon as I get off the phone with okay. you. But uh, we won't hold you long. But um, you know, we the, the the thing is with with social media and 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 how the NFL is approaching concussions. You know, it's a little different approach than when I played. You know, people forget that Steve Young was knocked out cold and he ended his career. Uh, but look at him. He's, a, he's one of the best commentators out there when he was with ESPN. Um, so, you know, as long as the doctors cleared him, uh, you know, I, I spoke to the dad, you know, and I kind of knew 10 days before Tua actually played that he was cleared with all the different doctors that, w- that he was seeing. and. Mm-hmm. And just for your information, my youngest son is also a coach for the Miami Dolphins. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay, so, so you, you got the so real have, insight then. <laughs> yeah, we have a we have a connection there from that standpoint. Uh, but you know, my my son because he did his Bill Walsh uh, internship with the Niners, mm-hmm. and of course, uh, you know, Mike McDaniel is one of our guys from here. So, and that's that's the connection why he's there. But but to a uh, no doubt makes that team better. Uh, I think the offense looked the best last week. Um, but then again, you know, when you're not playing like anybody else, it, this game is played by human beings. He's going to have to to knock off some rust as they keep as they keep going forward. Um, but yeah, so Miami is in a tough division. Uh, they they have a tough one uh, this week in Buffalo, and and hopefully Tua can make it all the way through. Jesse Zapolo, thank you so much for joining us. Four-time Super Bowl champion, two-time Pro Bowler, 13-year NFL veteran, all with the Niners. Before we get you out of here, before you can go talk to Mr. Tua Tungavailoa's father, uh, can you please just just give us some insight here into what your involvement is this weekend with the uh, 49ers Golden Heart Health Run uh, that's going on at Levi's this weekend? Well, the Golden Heart Run is, is a run that raises um, funds who help the 49er alumni. Mm. I know we have, you know, we have some benefits from the uh, NFLPA, our union, but, you know, uh, for a lot of guys during our era that played two, three years, you know, if you don't invest your money right, 
you know, you're going to need some help. And, and the Golden Heart Fund uh, that's sponsoring the Golden Heart Run uh, directly goes to our 49er alumni guys who are in need of uh, financial help and also health, uh, just struggling with their health. So uh, it's a great event. It's something that was started by some of our players, like Harris Barton, Ron Ferrari, Ronnie Locke. And of course, uh, Eddie DiBarlo was behind it from the very beginning. Uh, so that's an important event. Uh, uh, this coming uh, Saturday, you know, I was the starter last year. And uh, this year, the starter is uh, uh, our 49 er great linebacker, Patrick Willis. Wow. So, you know, it's exciting for all the fans to come out there, have fun, run around the stadium. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's a 4.9 miles, I, I believe. And uh, it's the same chance to get back to those who laid their health on the line for our 49er fan base. Wonderful. Yeah, the Golden Heart Fund uh, hosting the fourth annual Golden Heart Run presented by Cisco at Levi Stadium tomorrow. Thank you so much, Jesse. Appreciate you spending your time with us and uh, definitely hope that we can have you and, and talk to you again soon. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on, guys. Appreciate it. That was Jesse Sapolo again, four-time Super Bowl champion, two-time NFL Pro Bowler, 13-year NFL veteran, all with your San Francisco 49ers. And there you go. You heard a little insight there. Wasn't expecting that. We knew he had some connection with Tua. Nate did some digging and, and saw that he'd been at some Dolphins games on his Instagram. I didn't know his son was a coach. No idea. No. So there you go. I mean, here I was just expecting some light connect. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, award trophy ceremonies. We've met a couple times. Great kid and hope the best for his career. Getting some real insight there from uh, one Jesse Sapolo. I guess you really should get Kyle as a producer back here. We might be able to find this <laughs> stuff out. You're doing great, Nate. You're doing oh, great. Wow. Don't beat yourself up at all. Uh, coming up next, uh, again, thank you so much, Jesse Sapolo, for joining us. Coming up next, we'll get into some of those arena records. Devin Booker went crazy last night, set the Intuit Dome scoring record. We'll tell you what the Golden One Center scoring record is. And, uh, of course, I said the other day, Demonis Sabonis has played like the King's best player these past couple years. There's some numbers that definitely show uh, not only is Domas playing uh, the best basketball of any Sacramento King, but there are only a couple names of players who are doing what Domanis Sabonis has done. You'll find out what that is next right here. Styles and Watkins, Sackdown Sports. On the move. 